Hi, and welcome to lesson 17.4, proportional and non-proportional situations. So we're wondering here, uh, how can you distinguish between proportional and non-proportional relationships? And uh, we can see here, if a, and this is, this is important here, if a relationship is non-linear, so if it's not straight, it's non-proportional, right off the bat. Uh, if it is linear, which means if it's a straight line, it may be either proportional on or non-proportional. It could be either. But when the graph of a linear relationship contains the origin, then it's always proportional. Okay, we're going to use this information here in example one. So the graph shows the sales tax charge based on the amount of uh, amount spent on video game store in a particular city. Does the graph show a linear relationship? Um, yeah, it's a straight line. Done. And now, is it proportional? It is. It is a straight line, and it crosses the origin. It's proportional. Over. Easy peasy. Okay. So let's determine if each of the following graphs represents a proportional or non-proportional relationship. Okay. Well, uh, this one. This one's going to be non-proportional right here. So this is a. Uh, non-proportional non because of right there it doesn't cross the origin and this one on the right this one will be proportional pro poor proportional it crosses the origin right there it's a straight line easy So we're going to distinguish between proportional and non-proportional situations uh, using an equation. So if an equation is not a linear equation, it represents a non-proportional relationship. Okay. So and a linear equation in the form of y equals mx plus b, which we have shown this before, slope-intercept form, may represent either a proportional relationship when b is zero or a non-proportional relationship when b is not equal to zero. Okay. Uh, let me break this down just a little bit. Uh, we have, um, if, so if an equation is not a linear equation, so if it is not linear, so I have uh, x and y, and let's say it goes through the origin, but it's wavy like that, it's not linear. And so it's not proportional, because remember, proportional has to go through the middle, uh, so through the origin and be a straight line. Okay, so there's there's the first line. Uh, the second line, uh, a linear relationship of the war, of the form y equals mx plus b. I'm going to erase this stuff here. So if you remember um, y equals mx plus b, that's for a linear relationship. B cannot be uh, b has to be equal to zero. So y equals uh, m. <laughs> Let me give you an example. Uh, so if I have y equals 3x plus uh, 0, then what we have, I'm going to bring this over here to the side into space. Uh, if, y, if, if I have this, and I'm going to graph this, so I start with my y-intercept of 0 and my slope of 3 over 1, one, two, three over one. There. As you learned in the last step, there it is. And I can go down three, one, two, three, and back one on the same line. See, th that's proportional because it, it, it's linear. It's a straight line, and it goes right through the origin. So that's what they're talking about. Now, when they're saying that uh, in this other part, or it's non-proportional, b is not equal to zero, well, I'll give you a situation where we have uh, something like um, in y equals mx plus b, y equals um, negative 2x. Um, now, b cannot be zero, so plus uh, 1. Okay, and then I'll do this, and I'll graph this. So I start with y equals uh, with the b equals one. So that's b, that's at one. So 
this right here is telling me, okay, start at the y-intercept is one, and then use your slope of negative two over one, right, because there it is, rise over run, down two and to the right one, down two and to the right one would be right here. I'll go down two and to the right one again. Okay, that's non-proportional for a couple of reasons. One, uh, <laughs> it's not gonna be in the first quadrant, but beside that, it doesn't even cross the origin right here. See, it's linear, but it doesn't cross the origin. So, done deal. All right, back to this. So, we're going to use this. The number of years since Keith graduated from middle school can be represented by the equation a uh, y equals a minus 14, where y is the number of years and a is his age. Is the relationship between the number of years since Keith graduated and his age proportional or non-proportional? Well, I'm looking at this right here. This right here is telling me it's not proportional. It, the B, see, okay, this right here, we need to make sure that we understand this is in the form of Y equals MX plus B. And you might be thinking, well, okay, first off, I see the Y. Yeah, okay, you see the y and the equals, but there's no mx, and that's plus and that's minus. Okay, mx, x, and a, uh, these are the variables right here. And m is the slope. And we could see that uh, in front of the a could be a 1, because whenever you have a, that's the same thing as having 1a. So the m is 1. The x is the a, <laughs> look at that, okay, so that's that, and then plus b. So this could be um, plus negative 14, and so our b is negative 14, and b is not zero, so this is non-proportional. Okay. So let's reflect on this. Uh, in a proportional relationship, the ratio of y over x is constant. Okay, show that this ratio is not constant for the equation y equals a minus 14. And I have this here. Well, this is what we could use. We could use uh, 16 and 2 and 21 and 7. And let me explain that. So we have uh, this equation y equals uh, a minus 14 and this would be a and this would be y and so uh, and I know this because uh, the first these are ordered pairs and the first number is always the x number and the second number is always the y number but we have to uh, unfortunately recognize that a and x are taking the same place in these ordered pairs so I'm going to substitute this into my equation. So I have, instead of two, I have, uh, instead of y, I have two. Instead of a, I have uh, 16 minus 14. Okay, great. And I have, uh, and that works. And then if I plug in, um, what, 21 for a, 21 uh, minus 14, that would be uh, 7. So what I'm showing right now is I'm showing that these ordered pairs work in the equation 2, 2, 16. Okay, 16 minus 14 is 2. Okay, and then uh, I have 21 here. 21 minus 14 is 7. Okay, so these ordered pairs work. They are solutions. But if I take the y value 2 over 16, that's 1 8th right there. And we're looking for the y over x to be constant, so we're looking for it to be the same value. So that's 1 8th, but if I take 7 over 21, 7 over 21, and that's 1 3rd, and this number is not equal to that number, so it's not proportional. Next, suppose another equation represents Keith's age in months, y given to his age in years. What is, is the relationship proportional? Well, this is what we got. Oops. And so, yes, the ratio of the age in months to age in years is constant. 
And so what that means is age in months, so uh, months to years would be uh, what that's the y over the x. So it, what if you're 12 months, you're one year. If you are 24 months, you're two years and so on. I can go 36 and 3. This always simplifies to 12. 24 divided by 2 is 12, and 36 divided by 3 is 12. So that is constant. Okay, how about these? Determine if the following equations represent a proportional or non-proportional relationship. Give them a try. So what we have is this one is proportional we have and what we're looking for is this has no um, you know it's plus zero I guess if you will we're looking for something to be added after that first term 65t next number six this one is non-proportional and it's non-proportional because of this plus 2000 right there then we have this one and this one is non-proportional and what you need to do is you need to see <clears throat> that this could be rewritten as n equals negative 3p plus 450 and I rewrote this to show you that this is what I'm looking at right here the term without the variable because this is how it's written as y equals mx plus b and our last one here is non-proportional. And you might be thinking, wow, why? And to answer that, I would, let's see, I will change my color here. And uh, if I take 12d equals 36, and I divide both sides by 12, I get d is equal to, uh, what, 3. OK, if I graph this if this were of the uh, okay think of D I could I could change it to anything I'll make it Y equals 3 why <laughs> I'm making it Y so you can see the uh, this could be of the form Y equals MX plus B <laughs> so so what is what well the 3 the 3 it has no variable attached to it so the Y if I really go in deep uh, it would be 3. So the y-intercept would be 3. I don't, and how many x's do I have? If I truly write this, I don't have any x's. I have a 0 x's plus 3. And now I can graph this. The y-intercept is 3. 1, 2, 3. My slope is 0. See this, if you remember, that's the slope of 0. And a slope of 0 is a horizontal line. So that is my graph. And we can see it's linear, but it is non-proportional. It doesn't go through the origin. And that is what you got to know about all of these super tricky proportional and non-proportional relationships. So the question is, how can you use what you've learned about proportional and non-proportional relationships to compare these real-world situations? Well, we got an example four. We have uh, what well, a laser tag league has the choice of two arenas for a tournament. In both cases, X is the number of hours and Y is the total charge. Compare and contrast these two situations. We have arena A, all right, uh, Y equals 225X. So 225 times, $225 times the number of hours will be the total charge Y. And we have this, this, uh, this graph that shows the, the uh, time and hours compared to the total cost. Okay, so we will we'll see that uh, well in in arena A, what uh, the hourly rate is two hundred twenty-five dollars per hour because there's <laughs> there's no y-intercept right there. It's zero, and in here we have an initial fee of fifty dollars that's the y-intercept and uh, but the hourly rate let's see it goes up here let's see that's fifty and that's two hundred fifty for one hour oh yeah look at that this goes up 
here, it goes up $250 for, oops, <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's not good at all, for one hour. So there you go. That's how you can compare them. And uh, on this one, so we have an equation. Jessica's remodeling uh, and has a choice of two painters. Both in, case, uh, in both cases, X is the number of hours. Okay, so hours and hours. And Y is the total charge. So Y and Y. Compare and contrast these two situations. Um, <clears throat> B is zero again. You know, it's plus zero, so it's a y intercept. So this is the hourly rate. And for this one here, we can see that uh, 0 020, that's the y intercept right there. So there's an initial fee of $20 here. And then we can see the hourly rate by noting that this goes up um, uh, 20. Oh my god. 55 minus 20, I can't even think straight right now, 35. So it's $35 for one hour. And we can see right there, $35 per hour. So this is, uh, this one's $45 per hour and this is $35 per hour. Okay. Okay, we're asked to compare and contrast the following two situations. We have test prep center A, where they are. They have this equation here, and C is the cost in dollars, and H is the number of hours you attend. Well, I can see here that it's twenty dollars per hour. Okay, I can see that. That's the rate right there. Here, these guys, test prep center B, is charging twenty-five dollars per hour. And, but you have a hundred dollar coupon that you could use to reduce the cost. So <clears throat> I already know this. So we're going to find the rate per hour and, and what's going on here. So I would say, first off, if I have um, uh, for A, one hour, that would be um, what, 20 bucks? For test prep B, one hour. How much would you be charged? Well, it'd be um, twenty-five dollars for that hour, but you get to subtract the one hundred dollars, so you actually you spend negative seventy-five dollars. So you haven't spent any money yet. You're not going to be spending money for four hours, the first four hours. So at first, test prep center B is cheaper. So I would say a test prep center B uh, is cheaper for the first four hours. Um, then I was going I should say after that. After that, um, center A is cheaper because they're spending, uh, after four hours, you're spending 20 bucks per hour for A versus uh, 25 for B. And that's what you got to know about all these uh, comparing non proportional and non proportional relationships. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.